Time is 5.45 p.m. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Babcock Street State Road 507 Corridor Planning Study Public Meeting. My name is Ennis Davis, and I'm the Project Manager for the Florida Department of Transportation. I will now turn it over to Ryan to begin the presentation. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Cunningham, and I'll be your moderator for the meeting. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and to provide input. This meeting is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the PowerPoint presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439-858-1. For online participants, the GoToWebinar control panel should be visible in the upper right corner of your computer screen. If joining GoToWebinar on your mobile device, simply tap the screen to display the same options. The blue arrows in both images point to where you will find the question box. You can type a comment or question into the question box, then click send to submit your comment or question to staff. The red arrows in both images point to where you can find handouts, documents, and comment forms for this public meeting. Click the handouts icon to see available handouts and click on the file name to download. If you happen to experience a technical issue during this meeting, please type the issue into the questions box on the control panel on GoToWebinar to report it, or you can send an email to rmansfield at kittleson.com to report it, or you can call 407-373-1136 and staff will do their best to assist you. I will now begin the project presentation for you. We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public me meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by May 28th, 2021, 10 days after the public meeting, will become part of the public meetings project or the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. This public meeting is being recorded. A recording of this presentation will be posted on the project's webpage within one week following the meeting. For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return to project staff. If you're participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439-858-1. You may also email your comments and questions to the project manager directly at ennis, e -N -N -I -S, dot davis, d-a-v-i-s, at d-o-t dot state dot f-l dot u-s. You may mail written comments and questions to the project manager Ennis Davis at FDOT 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida 32720. And you may also call the project manager at 386-943-5422 to provide verbal comments during the normal business hours after the public meeting. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. The Florida Department of Transportation is required to comply with various non-discrimination laws and regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, District 5 Title VI Coordinator by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Deland, Florida, 32720, or by phone at 386-943-5367, or by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Jacqueline Paramore, title, state Title VI coordinator by mail at 605 Swanee Street, mail station 65 in Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, or by phone at 850-414-4753 or by email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. 
This information is shown uh, on a sign at the in-person location or on the project website and in the meeting notifications. This public meeting was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notices website, in the newspaper Florida Today, and on social media, and on the project webpage, www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439858-1. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public meeting. Planning studies determine the best way to serve existing and future travel demand. The studies identify the transportation issues by closely examining the existing and expected future conditions within each study area, including the design of the existing transportation facilities, transit services available, accommodation of non-motorized modes of transportation, traffic volumes, levels of congestion, and potentially unsafe conditions. The project development process consists of five steps, including long-range planning to identify the project need, a project development and environment study, or PD&E study, or concept development, project design, right-of-way acquisition if needed, and construction. The planning study is the first phase of the project development process, where the corridor's needs are identified and initial strategies and eva are evaluated and compared. More complex alternatives, having the pot potential for significant impacts, go through a PD&E study. Less complex alternatives with minimal impacts can go through a more streamlined concept development process. Let's briefly discuss the project background and the corridor needs. The corridor, the study corridor is a three mile section of Babcock Street from Palm Bay Road to US 192. Babcock Street serves between 31,000 and 38,000 vehicles per day in different parts of the study corridor. The study area includes 10 study intersections eight traffic signals, and two stop controlled intersections. A portion of the corridor fronts the campus of the Florida Institute of Technology, also known as Florida Tech. The FDOT is studying this corridor to evaluate, evaluate ways to improve safety and reduce congestion. Our team analyzed the existing conditions and future 2040 conditions of the corridor to identify its need and its users. Based on that analysis, we found congestion at multiple intersections on the corridor. In the future condition, peak hour, the signalized intersections at Eber Boulevard, at Florida Avenue, and at US 192 are expected to operate at capacity. And the intersection at Palm Bay Road is expect expected to be over capacity. Based on our analysis, capacity improvements at those congested intersections will improve vehicular mobility throughout the corridor without the need for road roadway widening. Five intersections on the corridor, corridor also had crash rates that exceeded the statewide average over the study period. Pedestrian and bicycle mobility and safety along the corridor is critical, and more opportunities to cross the street are needed, particularly around the Florida Tech campus. The corridor needs can be distinguished and summarized by four different modes or users on the corridor. For motorists, there's a need to improve corridor safety, intersection safety, and to address congestion at specific intersections. For pedestrians and cyclists, there's a need for safe, continuous facilities throughout the corridor, and additional opportunities to cross Babcock Street to improve access between land uses. For transit riders, there's a need to improve the ADA accessibility at transit stops. In this section, in this next section, we'll discuss the team's evaluation of the project alternatives identified to meet the corridor's needs. One of our primary strategies to address safety for motorists, pedestrians, and bicyclists is speed management. We considered a range of projects to calm traffic and reduce speed on the corridor. In the southern end of the corridor, from Palm Bay Road to Florida Avenue, we're proposing access improvements, which would include the installation of additional curbs on the edge of the roadway to help fill in an existing sidewalk gap near Palm Bay Road. From Florida Avenue up to US 192, our goal is to reduce speed limits to 30 miles per hour. To accomplish this, we would narrow travel lanes, add landscaping to calm traffic and provide a sense of enclosure along the roadside, install race crosswalks at six locations, including five locations in front of the Florida Tech campus. The raised crosswalks would be supported by some form of signalization. Install a raised median from Vita Way to Melbourne Avenue. These speed ma management strategies will work together in the short term to calm traffic and reduce vehicle speeds north of Florida Avenue. Longer term, roundabout intersections were considered at three locations 
to further reinforce traffic calming and reduce vehicle speeds throughout the corridor. We consider roundabouts at the intersections of Sun Lake Road, Lakewood Village and Engineering Street, and Southgate Boulevard. The project team identified and proposed several access improvements to help improve safety and traffic flow in the corridor, improve uh, vehicular access to Florida Tech, and create more opportunities for pedestrians and cyclists to cross Babcock Street. We propose installing a raised median from Vita Way to Melbourne Avenue, modifying seven locations to be directional median openings, and closing one other median opening subject to additional evaluation. A new traffic signal is planned at the Sun Lake Road intersection, which will include pedestrian crosswalks. We are also proposing three additional crosswalks on the corridor to safely facilitate pedestrian and bicycle movements across Babcock Street. Some other needs that were identified included providing safe continuous facilities for pedestrians and bicyclists on, along Babcock Street and improving pedestrian and bicyclist connectivity on both sides of the street. While many of the items we've just discussed will help with those needs, there are a few others the project team proposed, which include filling the remaining sidewalk gaps near Palm Bay Road, providing a wider sidewalk or shared use path, providing a dedicated bicycle facility in front of the Florida Tech campus, providing a buffer between the, the pedestrian and bicycle facilities and the travel lanes, adding trees for shade to enhance walking and biking comfort, and adding accessible transit pads to transit stops we're missing. <clears throat> on the study corridor, narrow bike lanes are provided on street between Melbourne Avenue and US 192. Other than the sidewalks, no bike facilities are provided elsewhere in the corridor. When we consider bicycle facility design, we want to design a facility that accommodates the user and the context. We evaluated several bike facility options, but three were deemed most appropriate for the user and the context of the Babcock, Babcock Street study corridor. Number one, the buffered bike lane appeals to a wide cross section of bicycle users by providing greater distance between vehicles and bicyclists and improving perceived safety and comfort. The second is the shared use path, which is used by both pedestrians and bicyclists. This increases the comfort and safety for bicyclists. However, sharing a narrow width with a passing bicycle can hinder pedestrian comfort. And the third is a two-way separated bike lanes. Uh, this provides a protected separated space for bicyclists, improves perceived comfort for both bicyclists and pedestrians. However, due to the additional space requirements, this option also requires more right-of-way and is more expensive. In our analysis, we considered the range of pedestrian and bicycle crosswalk activity at the study intersections. We noted the highest levels of activity are in front of the Florida Tech campus generally from Florida Avenue to Southgate Boulevard. In the short term, we propose incorporating a 10-foot shared use path on the southbound side of Babcock Street from Palm Bay Road to Melbourne Avenue and filling the sidewalk gap on the northbound side of Babcock Street down at the southern end of the corridor. In the long term, we propose widening the, sh the shared use path to 12 feet from Palm Bay Road to Sun Lake Road, incorporating an eight-foot wide two-way separated bike lane facility from Sun Lake Road to Crane Creek Bridge and adding a buffer to the existing on-street bike lanes between Melbourne Avenue and US 192. We'll now discuss the proposed short-term and long-term improvements for each section of the corridor. We'll start on the south end of the corridor and move to the north end. For those attending virtually or in person, renderings will be displayed on the screen and physical copies are also displayed at the in-person location. If you're attending via phone, these renderings are available for download with the other project materials on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439858-1. Our first typical section is between Palm Bay Road and Sun Lake Road. Currently, this section of the corridor has a six-foot sidewalk on the southbound side and intermittent sidewalk gaps on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated by a median. The short-term typical section includes a 10-foot shared use path on the southbound side and the sidewalk gap filled in on the northbound side. The long-term typical section includes the shared use path widened to 12 feet on the southbound side. Our next typical section is between Sun Lake Road and Florida Avenue. Currently, this section of the corridor has an eight-foot sidewalk on the southbound side and a five-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated by a median. 
the short-term typical section is the same ex as the existing condition. The long-term typical section includes eight-foot two-way separated bike lanes and a six-foot sidewalk on the southbound side. Our next typical section is between Florida Avenue and Crane Creek Bridge. Currently, this section of the corridor has an eight-foot sidewalk on the southbound side and a five-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated by a median. The short-term typical section includes the 10-foot shared use path on the southbound side, incorporated street trees, and narrowed travel lanes. The long-term typical section includes eight-foot, two-way separated bike lanes and a six-foot sidewalk on the southbound side. Our next typical section is at Crane Creek Bridge. Currently, the bridge section has a six-foot sidewalk and a barricade on the southbound side and a five-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated by a median. The short-term and long-term typical sections include a 12-foot shared use path on the southbound side, narrow travel lanes, and a wide nine-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Our next typical section is between Crane Creek Bridge and Melbourne Avenue. Currently, this section of the corridor has an eight-foot sidewalk on the southbound side and a five-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated by a two-way left turn lane. The short-term and long-term long -term typical sections include a 10-foot shared use path on the southbound side and a raised median. Our last typical section is between Melbourne Avenue and US 192. Currently, this section of the corridor has a six-foot sidewalk on the southbound side and a five-foot sidewalk on the northbound side. Two travel lanes in each direction are separated, separated by a median and a four-foot bike lane is provided in the section of the corridor. The short-term typical section is the same as the existing condition. The long-term typical section includes narrow travel lanes and the incorporation of seven-foot buffered bike lanes. The project team also considered a range of intersection alternatives to address the corridor's needs related to intersection safety and intersection congestion. Signal timing improvements were considered at multiple locations, including an overlap phase at US 192 that would allow the northbound right turn movement to go at the same time as the westbound left turn movement. Turn lane improvements are proposed at three locations, dual eastbound left turn lanes at Eber Boulevard and at Florida Avenue intersections, and dual westbound left turn lanes at the University Boulevard intersection. A new traffic signal is proposed at Sun Lake Road. For the long term, roundabouts were considered at three locations, including Sun Lake Road, University Boulevard, and Southgate Boulevard. And a partial median U-turn intersection was evaluated at Palm Bay Road. This corridor planning study identified the corridor needs for motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, and transit users and short and long-term improvements were identified and evaluated to meet those needs. The planning study is recommending that the short-term improvement strategies be included in an upcoming resurfacing project. The resur resurfacing project is not yet programmed, but proposed improvements may include narrow travel lanes, access management improvements, raised crosswalks with signalization, shared use path where viable, widened sidewalk on Crane, Crane Creek Bridge, filling sidewalk gaps, and installing accessible pads at transit stops. The planning study is recommending the long-term improvement strategies be advanced through the project development process. The proposed projects include turn lane improvements at Eber Boulevard at Florida Avenue and University Boulevard, roundabout intersections at Sun Lake Road, Engineering Street and Southgate Boulevard, a partial median U-turn intersection at Palm Bay Road and Babcock Street, landscaping, two-way separated bike lanes in front of the Florida Tech campus, and buffered bike lanes between Melbourne Avenue and US 192. We want to receive your feedback as part of this public information meeting. Our next step will be to meet again with our project team, review feedback that we received from this meeting, and select a preferred planning concept to move forward with in the short term. We plan to complete our project presentations and finalize the corridor planning study in the summer of 2021. <clears throat> We encourage your input and feedback about this project. All public comments and questions are part of the public meeting record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by May 28, 2021, 10 days after the public meeting will become part of the, public's, of the project's public meeting record. All comments and questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. 
This public meeting is being recorded and a recording of this presentation will be posted on the project, project's website within one page, within one week following the meeting, excuse me. <clears throat> For those in attendance at the in-person location, you may speak to our project staff on the floor or complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. If you're participating online, you may submit written questions or comments in the question box on the GoToWebinar control panel. Written comments may also be submitted on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439858-1. You may also email your comments and questions to the project manager directly at to ennis.davis at dot.state.fl.us. You may also mail your written comments and questions to the project manager, Ennis Davis, at FDOT. 719 South Wood, Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 32720. And you may also call the project manager at 386-943-5422 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours after the public meeting. The contact information is also available on the public meeting notification that you may have received by mail. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this public meeting and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by May 28th, 2021. Contact information, a recording of this public meeting, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the public meeting will be posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com slash project slash 439-858-1. Thank you again for participating tonight and we will leave the go to open to give you time to provide comments and questions and we hope you have a good night. Thank you. I'd like to also call your attention to the handouts. If you haven't seen those in your GoToWebinar panel, you can click on the handouts tab and you'll see five PDFs that are available for you to download or to view.
one more reminder, as mentioned, this recording will be posted to the project website. A copy of the presentation and the typical section exhibits are also available to download from the handout section of the webinar.
we'll be leaving the meeting open for just a couple more minutes. Thank you and have a good night.